You know, they should create a manual called How to Survive the Black Church. <laughs> because just showing up thinking you are about to get closer to God is not enough. You need some protection, but not any old protection. I found what I really needed was a grandmother who attended church every Sunday in a church suit and a badass hat. I found those were the people who were well respected and most protected. In my early 20s, I felt like something was missing from my life. I didn't know what my passion or purpose was. I was just out here existing. And if you know me, if I'm looking for something, you know I'm going to find it. Well, I'm not sure, but I decided to go find God. I recall the day like it was yesterday. It's in me, stuck. Now keep in mind, I have never been to church as an adult. I didn't have any church clothes, money, or even a Bible. I mean, I had heard great things about the place, so I figured that's where you find God. <laughs> Everything I heard made me think that it was heaven on earth. Now if the church is heaven, then that means the people are the angels, so the pastor would be God. Now you see where I'm going with this. <laughs> so, not only was I missing that grandmother in that badass hat, I was also missing church clothes. So what I wore was a tight skirt, a tight shirt, and some cute heels. <laughs> my body was shaped up and banging. <laughs> I was killing it for my first day of church. I walked in and I was greeted by smiling faces and what I thought were very nice people. I was thinking this is really where the angels are. These are very good people. I was so excited to stand when they asked for the visitors. I stood, the church welcomed me, and it was great. Now when I look back, I realize Matthew 2 and 13 would have been perfect. It says, run from danger. <laughs> Flee. But it was my first day. I didn't know any scriptures. I also didn't know I should have ran for my spiritual life. Well, soon as service ended, the pastor ran from the pulpit. When I say he ran, I didn't even get a chance to get my tight skirt off the pew. He moved fast. He asked to take me out to dinner right then and there. Dead smack in the middle of church. I didn't know what to say because remember, if the church is heaven and the people are the angels, this is God. I was confused on why the pastor wanted to take me to dinner because I was used to the street style approach when a man asks you out on a date. But I guess church is more a sanctified version of the same game. Oh, well, I said no because I had promised my mom I would make her my famous spaghetti. So I got away from the pastor, but on the way out the door, a deacon caught me and asked could he use my cell phone. I was thinking, it's 2003, everybody got cell phones. But I went ahead and gave him my phone number because I'm new here. The deacon put his cell phone up in my phone, locked it in, and said, call him. If I could be frank, I didn't know what the hell was going on in my first day of church. I got out of there, but I came back the next week because the choir was awesome, the pastor could preach, and I thought it was what I needed. I also thought it was what my son needed, my mama needed, my aunt and uncle, even my best friend and her daughter. I quickly decided that everybody needed God. I was walking the walk, and about two months later, I was involved in Sunday school, Tuesday night teaching, Bible study. I had even joined the choir, and I was the treasurer for Sunday school. I mean, I was all the way in. And along the way, I found myself in bed with the pastor. Well, 
Let me tell you, heaven on earth quickly but turned into hell in church. <laughs> Especially when the women found out I was dating a pastor. He was out loud about me and very quiet about the other women. Yeah, I said it, the other women. <laughs> it was a lot of them. It took a while, but I finally realized I was losing while I was attending church. I lost confidence, I lost faith, I lost self-esteem, and I had also lost the desire that I once had for God. I also lost my best friend. Remember the one I had brought and I was so excited about the angels? Turns out, she was in bed with the pastor too. Well, <laughs> I got a friend right here. <laughs> Well, I finally knew that it was time to go when I realized the women of the church were being intentional about hurting me. They were mean. And if you don't know anything about the black church, well, the pastor's wife is called the first lady, and I overheard somebody call me the second lady. <laughs> Those were fighting words because I'm second to none. But that's when I knew it was time to go. It was too much, so I left. I spent some time depressed, but not a long time, though. I still couldn't believe I went to church to find God and got hurt. So after spending four years looking for God, I had decided he was going to have to come find me. <laughs> and I'll be honest, I was kicking it. I was loving every minute of it. I was traveling to new places. I was partying with friends. Drinks was flowing, club popping like there was no tomorrow. I was living life to the absolute fullest, and somewhere in the mix, I even found true love. I met my person, I had another baby, and I thought it was all. I had it all. But every now and then, I catch myself wondering, is there more to life? I still had that desire to find true passion and purpose, but little did I know my cousin Adrian would be the guide. Randomly, my cousin asked me to coordinate her wedding, and I said no because I had no idea why she would be asking me to do something so big. There's no way I could do that. She told me I was bossy and a good planner <laughs> and said, yes, you could do that. <laughs> well, I finally agreed and on July 5th, 2017, I coordinated her wedding. And let me just say, I did excellent. <laughs> it went great. It was perfect to say the least. And here's the crazy thing. Instead of going out looking for God, I found something even better. I found something that was, I was able to do from my heart and it came very easy. Now, 21 years later, I'm a wedding day coordinator. I am the proud owner of Shine Love Events. In the last seven years, I've managed and executed 85 amazing weddings, 10 unforgettable events, and I have truly found my passion, and I absolutely love bringing dreams to life. What I've realized is that this passion and strength was always inside me, waiting to be discovered. I didn't need a menu, an outfit, or even a grandma with a suit and a badass hat. <laughs> So I still wear banging outfits. What I needed was already within me. God has been my guide from the start, and as I continue this journey, I know I am capable of rising, thriving, and shining right where I am. <laughs>